Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I'm going to ramble a little bit, just a little sports commentary before I talk about picks. Colin Kaepernick, quarterback, San Francisco 49ers. Now, I'm not a licensed agent. I don't want anyone to believe that I'm here auditioning for some position as Colin Kaepernick's agent. Legally, I can't be, right? Just get that straight. Uh, but Kaepernick got ripped off by the 49ers. I don't believe what you're reading about $61 million guarantees. The uh, contract really only has a $12 million guarantee. Understand, this is not serving in the armed forces. This is working for a multimillionaire investment group. You just happen to do so playing football, right? Kaepernick, great athlete, but you and I have seen athletes fall from grace, right? You and I have seen how teams treat a Josh Freeman who one minute looks like he's about to get $10 million plus a year. Then he gets in a slump. Now, of course, he doesn't even have a contract in the league. So when you have an opportunity to get millions of dollars, and let's get real here, in the National Football League, understand the only money that really matters is the guaranteed money because they can cut you in the blink of an eye. When you have an opportunity to get the big guarantee, then it's absurd to only end up with a $12 million guarantee when you play the quarterback position. This contract is going to be dwarfed shortly by other young quarterbacks. Russell Wilson, uh, Cam Newton, Andrew Luck. I'll just predict right here, right now, that each of them will get more guaranteed than Colin Kaepernick. And keep in mind, for Kaepernick, the guarantee really mattered because the team's not on the friendliest of terms with their head coach, Jim Harbaugh, who, of course, brought Kaepernick in. Right? The team itself is in a very tough division in football. The defending Super Bowl champions, for example, play them twice a year. Right? There's no guarantee of future success. And in the pocket, as good as Kaepernick is, and I think Kaepernick is an above average quarterback, but in the pocket, he doesn't read defenses as well as, let's say, Drew Brees, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, uh, Cam Newton or Andrew Luck right so I believe that since Kaepernick is so outside the pocket and risks getting injured and since we've seen great athletes get knee injuries early in their career Washington pick up look at your quarterback right RG3 right look at the last time Michael Vick was able to play back-to-back -back 16 game seasons every game right running quarterbacks get hurt you're at that point in your career where you can set yourself up for life with guaranteed money and you're only getting 12 million you've bought into the PR hype of the team that you're helping the team sign other people I don't see the team breaking you off an extra check when they get extra endorsement money. In fact, aren't you under a salary cap? The team already has the benefit of a salary cap. So let's stop kidding ourselves with this. I'm helping the team sign additional talent, right? There is no real profit sharing in the NFL. Player, you're the hired help. When you're in a position, and let's face it, you're only in that position very few times in your career, right? Kaepernick this year will be making about a million dollars playing quarterback because, God forbid, he wasn't a first-round pick in the NFL draft. So everyone's smiling. Everyone feels they want out. Cap, you'll figure out shortly when you hear that Andrew Luck and others have gotten more than $20 million up front that the 12 mil you got up front doesn't add up. Let's talk about this weekend's fight. Now, I get in trouble here online when I talk about hedges. Invariably, every hedge video 
someone complains and someone says, oh, gee, this hedge will only get me 2.2% in winnings, right? Every time. Understand with a hedge, you don't have to put the same amount of money on both sides of the play, right? Understand, too, hedges make possible bets on less than even money plays, right? You can actually bet more on them if you know that the outlier event, right? If you know, let's say you see two outcomes from an event. If you know that you're covered if the second most likely outcome takes place, then you can bet more on the most likely outcome. Let me just tell you about hedges for a second. Understand, in the investment world, Smart people hedge. That's why you have hedge funds, right? These are financial transactions. I don't understand the argument that when it comes to gambling on sports, somehow you're supposed to be unhedged or you're not taking chances, right? Keep in mind, too, good luck picking a stock that's going to jump 30% in one day. If you leave a weekend and you have 30% profit in your pocket, consider yourself lucky. Understand, as you look around the casino, as ornate, as gorgeous as it looks, understand, gamblers have built that casino, right? The net cash flow is from the gambling public to the entrepreneurs running the casino. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in business. So when you're seeing brass, when you're seeing gold, Right When you're seeing you know ornate spreads and stuff like that, when you're seeing high-priced entertainment there, free of cost, you need to realize that gamblers as a whole are paying for that. So when you're in the casino and you're actually leaving with a 30% profit, pat yourself on the back. Most of the people around you are not. Right Now let's talk about a possible hedge. Even cheapskates might like this hedge. Um, in the Sergio Martinez, Miguel Cotto fight based on actual odds being offered by casinos. Right? Now, let me say this. The bet I like here, I think Martinez wins the fight. Right? I like Martinez to win for that reason. Hedged with Cotto by knockout. Right? Juggle the numbers. Figure out the math. You can actually make it work. But let's say you're a cheapskate and you don't want to bet on Martinez simply to win the fight, which would give you Martinez by decision, right? And let's remember, Martinez's last fight against Martin Murray went to a decision. In fact, let's remember, Martinez's fight against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. went to a decision, right? So some of Martinez's fights do go to decision, even fights that did not. Look at the Matthew Macklin fight. They went several rounds, didn't they? Right? Well, let's say you're a chief skate and you don't want to pay for all 12 rounds and the judge's verdict, which is what you're doing when you take a guy to win the fight. Right? Well, here the odds seem to be mispriced. Because you look at these two guys, they both hit hard. Right? They both hit hard. In my opinion, Cotto doesn't have the boxing skills to hang with Martinez. I get the feeling somebody's going to get knocked out in this fight. Now, my preferred play is Martinez to win Hedge with Cotto by knockout. But to the cheapskates who don't want to pay a minus 200 or what have you, understand right now, Cotto by KO is a minus, excuse me, is a plus 300. Understand right now, Martinez by KO is a plus 275, right? Even those of you who don't know how to hedge can't blow this one because you're getting better than even money on both sides of the bet. If any guy gets stopped at any time in this fight, you profit, right, handsomely by being on both sides of the bet. Now let's talk about over-unders, because I always get emails and private comments from people saying, why not just fool with the over-under? You know, I would argue that the rounds in which guys are most tired are the late rounds. The 10th, 11th, and 12th rounds. 
right? My point to you is simply, I want all 12 rounds. I don't want to deal with an over-under of, let's say, nine rounds where suddenly one guy gets a KO in the 10th round and I'm like, oh, man, damn. You know, I wish I would have had this round. No, no, no. I want all 12 rounds. Taking both guys by KO gets you all 12 rounds up until the decision. Right? So if the fight gets stopped by KO at any time in those 12 rounds, you clean up. Right? That's what I like. I don't want to mess around with the under. Right? Let me just say, too, guys talk big games before fights, right? One guy's saying four rounds, another guy's saying three rounds. Then you watch the fight, and the guy's being careful, the guy's nervous. There are things you didn't expect, crowd energy, crowd noise, right? A guy might think, hey, I'm going to get a fourth-round knockout, then might taste the other guy's power. You'll be surprised how that can discourage a fighter early, right? So don't go by what the guys say. Look at the styles. Cotto's going to come in. He's going to try to land a left hook. Right? That's the long and short of it. Martinez is a little bit more interesting. Keep in mind, Martinez is a southpaw. In fact, they're both southpaws. But here's where it gets really dicey. Right? Cotto is fighting out of an orthodox stance. So Cotto's power hand's going to be up front. Right? Martinez is fighting out of a real southpaw stance. Right? So his big gun is going to be in back. I think some punches are going to land flush here. I'm expecting a stoppage. I think the plus 300 on Cotto by KO and the plus 270 on Martinez by KO are mispriced. I think the likeliest outcome is a stoppage. Right? I like both guys by stoppage. If you're a little bit more sophisticated gambler and you're prepared to pay a little bit more for less of a return, then consider right, Martinez to win hedged with Cotto by KO. Let's talk about another fight. Now you got to be kidding me. I looked on film. I was hearing that Andy Lee is going to fight John Jackson. And I uh, read around, I saw where Jackson had trained with Sergio Martinez, and Jackson's the son of Julian Jackson. Let me just clear up something right here. You know what? Jerry Rice Jr. in football is trying to make an NFL team. Hey, the fact that he's Jerry's son doesn't mean diddly. Right? This is professional sports. This isn't the corporate world. This isn't Junior following in Daddy's footsteps and everyone in the office deferring to Junior because Daddy has corporate power. No, this is boxing, baby. Right? I don't care who John Jackson's father is. John Jackson's father's not going to be in the ring with him. Let me say something more troubling to the John Jackson crowd. John Jackson's not Julian Jackson. I looked at film clips of John Jackson and I have to say I was underwhelmed. Right? If I'm Andy Lee, now keep in mind, Andy Lee was beating Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Was beating him before we got knocked out. That's the fight without the post-fight urine test. Right? That's the fight where Andy's people wanted Chavez Jr.'s gloves weighed just as a show of good faith. And the Chavez Jr. people refused. Right? Think about it. That fight has question marks all over the place. Well, I'll say this. Andy Lee's the much more experienced, much better boxer than John Jackson. I don't care about punching power. Right? When the gap between the skill levels of the two fighters is this pronounced. I don't care about who the fighters are related to. I don't know who Andy Lee's related to, and I couldn't care less. Right? The only other guy in the ring with them is going to be the referee. Andy Lee comes in at a side profile, shoots a very good jab. Andy Lee can win this fight, in my opinion, just circling and jabbing him. Right? Let me tell you what I saw on film with John Jackson. He's very good when you're up close. 
after a clinch, that moment right after a clinch, where you're backing away, John Jackson is a master at hitting you at exactly that moment. I'm guessing Andy Lee has looked on film and he's aware of that. Right? So Andy Lee has to protect himself at all times, especially when he's backing away from clinches. But make no mistake, you know, John Jackson is wooden-legged compared to Andy Lee. Andy Lee bends his knees. Andy Lee comes in. He's hard to hit. Andy Lee has power. My big concern about this fight isn't Andy Lee's skills. It's Andy Lee's weight, right? I'm accustomed to seeing Andy Lee fight at middleweight, for example, where he fought Chavez Jr. This fight's at 154. When I see a guy in the middle of his career suddenly losing weight, I'm wondering if this is going to be a Chris Bird situation, right? Where Chris Bird was a heavyweight, lost some weight, looked terrible, right? So that's my concern. But in terms of boxing, I like Andy Lee. I don't understand why he's only a minus 200. He's favored in the fight, but he's not favored to the degree by which he should be. I like Andy Lee for hedge bettors like myself. I'd hedge to play with Jackson by KO. In my opinion, Jackson only has a puncher's chance. Let me talk about a guy who actually beat Jackson in the past. He's fighting this weekend too. The state of Ohio has a lot going on. Their favorite son, LeBron James, right from Akron, Ohio, is about to play in the NBA Finals, right? You got people like, you know, keep in mind, this is the state of Ezra Charles. You got people like Adrian Broner, Sean Porter. They're from Ohio. Ohio has a vibrant boxing scene. Well, one of the guys from Ohio who has skills, Right, who's an elite boxer, is 6'3", Willie Nelson. Right, Willie Nelson is fighting Daryl Cunningham. Right, in my opinion, technique-wise, this fight should be a mismatch. Daryl Cunningham's claim to fame is knocking out Anquan Eccles. Right, understand Eccles was in his prime 10-odd years ago. He wasn't in his prime a few years ago. I, I believe that fight took place in 2010 when Daryl Cunningham caught up to him. Right? Daryl Cunningham is a guy who is a big puncher. But he's slow and he's methodical. In other words, he's just like John Jackson who Willie Nelson already beat. Right? John Jackson's one loss is to Willie Nelson. Willie Nelson, by the way, Nelson is a guy who, even the fight he lost against Vincent Arroyo, was outboxing his opponent before getting decked three times. If there's a question about Nelson, it's his chin, not his boxing ability. Right? I'm expecting Willie Nelson to win this fight. I'd hedge the play with Cunningham by KO. What I don't see happening is Cunningham winning this fight by decision. That's the outcome I would rule out. Let me also say too, Willie Nelson is a fighter you need to keep an eye on. Let me make an admission here. Online here years ago, I picked Willie Nelson to win a fight, and that's the fight he went out and lost against Vincent Arroyo. But I've been keeping an eye on this guy, and this guy's an elite fighter. And in boxing, you know, you have the haves, the guys who have gotten the opportunities, who have the belts, who are in title fights. Then you have the have-nots, guys who haven't had that opportunity. But that doesn't mean that a guy who's a have-not doesn't have talent. Willie Nelson is a guy who has a lot of talent. He was expected to lose to John Jackson when they fought. He won that fight by unanimous decision, right? Nelson has a lot of talent. He's exactly the kind of opponent that gamblers need to keep an eye on because most people don't know who he is 
And the guy simply put is tremendous. If he didn't get decked multiple times by Arroyo, right, his name would be in the bright lights right now. So to sum up, I'm expecting Sergio Martinez to beat Miguel Cotto, right? But I believe Cotto has a puncher's chance in that fight. I don't think Cotto has the boxing skills to hang with Sergio Martinez, who, in my opinion, is one of the more underrated champions of our time, right? I'm expecting Andy Lee to beat John Jackson. Let me go one step further. If Andy Lee gets blown out in this fight, then Andy Lee needs to think about retirement, right? Because John Jackson is the kind of robotic puncher who a seasoned vet with movement, with a jab, who can change his balance and bend his knees like Andy Lee can, should be able to dominate. I like Andy Lee in that fight, and I know I'm going to hear about the Horta fight. Andy Lee's last fight, which was a majority decision, in my opinion, Frank Horta is underrated. I don't care what the odds were going into that fight, Horta is underrated. And speaking of underrated... I consider Willie Nelson to be underrated. I'm expecting him to beat Daryl Cunningham. We'll see what happens. I'd hedge that play with Cunningham by KO. We'll see what happens. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.